Windsor Castle is the oldest and largest inhabited castle in Europe. Construction began under William the Conqueror in the 11th century, and since that time to the present day, it serves as the residence of the reigning monarch. Windsor Castle is the final resting place of many kings, queens and members of the royal family, including the late Queen Elizabeth II and her husband, Prince Philip. Known for its history and beautiful architecture, it's been the scene of many a royal birth and death. Could this be why Windsor Castle is reputedly so haunted? This is part two of our series focusing on the hauntings at Windsor Castle. A link to part one is in the description box. Another royal apparition witnessed at Windsor Castle is the figure of King George III, who died at Windsor Castle at the age of 81. It is well documented that King George III suffered from recurrent and eventually permanent mental illness. Some experts say that he may have been suffering from a liver disorder called porphyria, where toxic substances build up in the body, causing vomiting, confusion, fever and an increased heart rate. Attacks of porphyria can last for days or even weeks, and when King George would suffer such an episode, he would be confined to a set of rooms below the Royal Library at Windsor Castle. These rooms overlooked the North Terrace of the castle, and frequently the palace guards would march past and catch the eye of King George, temporarily bringing him back to normality. King George would stand at the window, observe the soldiers marching grandly past him, and he would raise his hand in acknowledgement of the guard's command of eyes right. King George III died of pneumonia on the 29th of January, 1820. His body lay in state for two days and his funeral and interment took place at St George's Chapel, Windsor on the 16th of February. Whilst his body lay in state, the routine changing of the guard continued as normal and as the soldiers passed the King's old rooms, the chief guard, William Knowles, looked up and saw the familiar face of King George. The guards continued to follow their familiar command of eyes right and in astonishment the apparition of the king would make the customary gesture in return. Knowles went on to become the personal treasurer and financial manager of the Prince of Wales, who later became King Edward VII, a job he found difficult because of the prince's wild spending habits. In addition to King George being seen at the window below the Royal Library, his voice has been heard muttering, what, what, in deep confusion, sadly a very familiar phrase he was heard to say during those difficult times. In 1642, the English Civil War broke out, splitting the country into Royalists, who supported King Charles I, and Parliamentarians, sometimes called Roundheads, who wished to abolish the monarchy. Windsor Castle fell to the Parliamentarians, who quickly began looting St George's Chapel of its valuable artefacts. The chapel's organ, windows and books were destroyed. The Lady Chapel and parts of Henry VIII's tomb were emptied of valuables, and by the end of the war it is estimated that 100 kilos of gold and silver had been stolen. King Charles I was brought to the castle as a prisoner in 1647 before being moved to Hampton Court, then returned to Windsor for the last three weeks of his life before his trial and execution in January 1649. After his beheading, his body was brought back to Windsor to be interred without ceremony in the vault of St George's Chapel. His coffin was draped with a black cloth and carried up to the chapel on the 8th of February 1649. Legend suggests the sky had been serene and clear until then, but suddenly clouded over and a blizzard descended on Windsor Castle at that time. By the time the coffin reached the chapel, 
the black cloth was completely covered in white snow, with some suggesting that this was indeed a divine sign of his innocence. He was interred in the same vault as King Henry VIII and Jane Seymour. The spectre of Charles I is seen in the canon's house, located in the castle grounds. Despite being beheaded, the apparition of the tragic king appears intact, with Charles looking sad and mournful, and looking exactly like the famous Van Dyke portrait he commissioned many years ago. The Norman Tower is also home to a ghostly figure of an unknown man. Used as a prison in the past, the man seems to be harmless. Children playing in the room have seen him, but never been frightened, and residents have felt an invisible entity brush past them. Perhaps this is the spirit of a prisoner who doesn't want to leave. In the 1970s, John Howden, a member of the Scots Guards, was stationed at Windsor Barracks. One Saturday in June, around eight o'clock in the evening, he took up his duty within the private quarters of the castle, facing the gardens, well away from public access. This was a location with a reputation amongst the guardsmen of being haunted or unusual. Standing in his sentry box, he noticed the figure of a man approaching, a tall figure walking slowly, wearing a cape of some sort. He left his sentry box, raised his rifle and bayonet, and challenged the man to halt and explain who he was. The man greeted the guard, and it became clear that he was in fact a policeman, wearing a police helmet, cape, and with his police badge on a chain on the cape itself. The policeman mentioned what a pleasant evening it was, and exclaimed that it had been a very long time since he had carried out that particular duty. Howden challenged the policeman as to whether he was authorised to be in this private area of the castle. The policeman assured Howden that this was indeed one of his regular patrols. Howden noticed the policeman wore his PC number on the collar of his tunic, which he thought was unusual, as present-day police officers wore theirs on their tunic shoulders. He now noticed that the whole uniform looked very old-fashioned, and was about to ask the policeman when he was interrupted by the officer asking if Howden would like a cigarette. Howden said no, but the policeman began to smoke. Howden exclaimed that perhaps he would see the policeman again. All of a sudden, the policeman said he had to go, mumbling goodnight, and disappeared very rapidly around the corner. Somewhat startled, Howden hurried to the corner to look for the police officer, but he had vanished. There was absolutely no sign of him. Puzzled, Howden returned to his duty. After his duty, he asked if any other guards had seen this mysterious policeman pass by on his way to the private quarters. None of them had. He reported the incident at the guard room, and it was officially logged. It was then explained to him that he had encountered the ghost of the policeman who died on duty of a heart attack 40 years ago in that particular area of the castle grounds. He had in fact been encountered by the guards many times. Windsor Castle was a very special place for Queen Victoria and her consort, Prince Albert. Queen Victoria also proposed to Albert in the Blue Closet, part of the private apartments. The night before her engagement, she wrote to her uncle Leopold, the King of Belgium, stating, Albert's beauty is most striking, and he is, in short, very fascinating. After their wedding on the 10th of February 1840, the devoted couple chose Windsor Castle for their honeymoon. Victoria and Albert went on to have nine children, all born at Buckingham Palace, with the exception of Prince Alfred, the future Duke of Edinburgh, who was born at Windsor in 1844. Five of her children would marry at Windsor, four in St George's Chapel and one in the castle's own private chapel. In 
In December 1861, at 10.50pm, Prince Albert died in the Blue Room at Windsor Castle when Victoria was only 42 years old. The Queen, completely stricken by grief, wore dark mourning clothes and became known as the Widow of Windsor. It took many years for Victoria to return to public life. Albert's body was temporarily entombed in St George's Chapel at Windsor. A year after his death, his remains were laid to rest at the Royal Mausoleum, Frogmore, in the grounds of Windsor Castle. In March 1883, Victoria fell down some stairs at Windsor, which left her lame until July. She never fully recovered and was afflicted with rheumatism thereafter. In January 1901, Victoria, aged 81, complained of feeling weak and unwell. She died at Osborne House on the 22nd of January. On the 25th of January, her body was lifted into the coffin. She was dressed in her wedding veil and a white dress. A dressing gown belonging to Albert and a plaster cast of his hand were placed next to her. A lock of John Brown's hair and a picture of him were placed in her left hand but were concealed from the family by a bunch of flowers. Her funeral took place at St George's Chapel after two days of lying in state. She was interred next to her beloved Albert in the Royal Mausoleum at Frogmore. Victoria's great-grandson, Edward VIII, became king in 1936 after his father, George V, died at Sandringham. Although he was a king who was never crowned, Edward was impatient with royal protocol and caused concern amongst politicians due to his disregard for established conventions. As a young man, he had a reputation for being a womaniser and behaving recklessly, failing to settle down and having an array of affairs with married women. King George V was disappointed with his son and famously declared, after I am dead, the boy will ruin himself in 12 months, a somewhat accurate prophecy. In 1930, Edward received the lease of Fort Belvedere in Windsor Castle, where he continued a series of relationships with married women, including Frieda Dudley Ward and Lady Furness, who introduced Edward to fellow American divorcee Wallace Simpson. It became clear that Edward could not marry Simpson and remain on the throne, so Edward controversially abdicated. With a reign of just 326 days, Edward's reign was one of the shortest in history. Edward VIII wanted to make some significant changes at Windsor. According to legend, Wallace Simpson wanted to remove some spruce trees planted by Victoria and Albert from the grounds of Windsor. This should have been a straightforward task. However, the work was hindered by a number of inexplicable phenomena. Apparently, the workers even witnessed the apparition of Queen Victoria herself, who appeared shouting and waving her arms in disapproval as she marched towards them. The trees still stand there today. <laughs> 